What is going on everybody? Jonathan here with Gig Nation and today we're going to be looking at an opportunity that Amazon has been pouring a ton of their marketing budget into. They're looking to partner with entrepreneurs that want to start their own business. So they're really looking to lure in these entrepreneurs with the potential revenue, the potential earnings that you could make through a package delivery business with Amazon. Now these delivery service partners are going to be managing 20 to 40 vans and up to a hundred employees at any given time. So this is a lot of management that goes into this. Now, normally I really like to encourage people to be entrepreneurial, but as an entrepreneur, you have to be very careful about which business ventures you take on. And this is one of those business ventures that may just be too good to be true. Amazon advertises anywhere between $1 million and $4.5 million in annual revenue. But when you break down the profits, it looks more like anywhere between $75,000 to $300,000 a year. Now, this is still a lot of money, and it's enough to get a lot of people excited about this opportunity. But if this is something that you're considering, I urge you to watch this full video to consider all the risks and the potential pitfalls of becoming an Amazon delivery service partner. Now, before we hop into this video, I have to do a quick shout out to gigsharks.com. It's the website that I've been working on. If you're looking for a gig, uh, in your area, this lists all the different gigs by city. So make sure to go ahead and check that out. All right, let's hop into this list. So the first reason why you should not start an Amazon DSP business is because 100% of the risk is shifted onto you. Amazon is one of the biggest, fastest growing companies out there, but they don't wanna take on any of that risk to jeopardize uh, their potential earnings. They wanna pass that on to you. So as a delivery service partner, you're hiring on your own employees, anywhere between 40 and 100 employees. And that means that you're having 20 to 40 vans out there on the road at any given time. Now, if one of these vans gets into an accident on the road, you are liable. Amazon's not on the hook. That comes down to you. And if someone sees Amazon packages in the back of that van, they may try and target uh, with a lawsuit, try and get some money out of this because they're thinking Amazon, but really your business is on the line and you could take a big hit here. The second reason why you want to avoid becoming an Amazon delivery service partner is because you are managing between 40 and 100 employees. This is a 24 seven job, 365 days out of the year. You are grinding nonstop to manage a large number of employees and you're basically finding these commercial drivers with pretty much no experience or very little experience. There's no guarantee that they're gonna stick around. Uh, you basically are taking a full-time job, significantly more than a full-time job, just to manage these people and it's going to be a very difficult environment to manage in a very high stress environment. The expectation is that you are delivering packages to a very high standard. Amazon is constantly uh, tweaking their delivery requirements to try and deliver the ultimate customer experience and you have to fill that constantly. This is a very high stress job that could actually do a lot of damage to your health. It could take a toll on your well-being through all of the stress that's going to be put on you uh, with really a job that never ends. It never stops because you're constantly uh, having to look over a large number of employees. The third reason why you should avoid this opportunity is because Amazon is your only client. That's putting all of your eggs in one basket and that really just adds to another layer of risk that we previously talked about because Amazon uh, could easily restructure their business. They could close down a warehouse near you. They've been known to do this if they're not getting enough demand or just demand could shift and change and they could decide that they don't need as many of these partners as they previously thought they did, which could significantly cut down on your routes and impact your business and your business's profitability. The number four reason on this list to avoid becoming an Amazon delivery service partner is that Amazon is not loyal to anything other than their profit margin. So we've seen this in a bunch of different segments of Amazon's business. And we're gonna start with Amazon sellers. So Amazon sellers have constantly been hit with higher selling fees on this platform over the years because Amazon just wants to squeeze more of that profit margin out of them. Now, if Amazon sees one of these products performing at a high level, Amazon will say, hey, we can in-house this, we can make an Amazon Basics model, and basically we can cut prices low enough so that you will go out of business, and all of a sudden Amazon's product has taken your place. We've seen this happen a multitude of times. Amazon has put their own 
uh, sellers out of business just by replacing their products online. Now they'll do this because they're looking uh, to increase that profit margin. Even if you were bringing them profits before, they want more of that profit for themselves. So they will quickly put you out of business. And we've also seen this with Amazon Flex drivers. So Amazon Flex drivers are basically uh, a similar type of business model to delivery service partners just on a much smaller scale because they're really just running their own business out of their own vehicle. And Amazon Flex will decide that they don't want these drivers on a whim. They will close Amazon Flex programs in certain areas. They will deactivate drivers for not meeting their standards without really even telling them why. The number five reason to avoid becoming an Amazon DSP is because of hiring challenges. It's not exactly easy to find commercial delivery drivers. There are a ton of apps out there looking to do the same thing with food delivery and with package delivery. You're competing with DoorDash, uh, Postmates, Grubhub, Instacart, all of these big brands that have a huge marketing budget to bring on new commercial drivers. And you are looking to bring them on to a less flexible environment, which is not as popular uh, in 2019. Delivery drivers are looking to work when they want, where they want, and you're trying to give them a more rigid schedule, which is something that might not appeal to them. Now at the moment, a lot of these drivers are actually making pretty good pay on a daily basis, uh, working underneath these Amazon delivery service partners. So it might be easy to bring in new drivers right now, and it's, you know, currently it's November of 2019, but as we've seen, Amazon likes to raise its fees. They like to make business uh, models less profitable for their partners and as it becomes less and less profitable the people who are going to be getting squeezed is those drivers so it's going to become even harder to bring on new drivers uh, as this business uh, continues to grow and evolve the number six reason to avoid this business model is because the advertised revenue and advertised earnings that amazon is luring you in with is actually just an estimate so if you read the fine print amazon doesn't guarantee any of these earnings they can really be anywhere between zero and 4.5 million for your total annual revenue and that means that you're uh, bottom of $75,000 per profit for this delivery service partner business, well, that's not really a floor. It could actually end up being significantly lower than $75,000 a year. The number seven reason on the list to avoid this opportunity is because you're paying a minimum of $10,000 startup to buy into this opportunity. It could actually end up being a lot more than $10,000, and you're really just buying yourself a full-time job uh, when you don't know what that minimum earnings is going to be, you're really taking on a lot of risk here and you're actually, uh, you know, buying into some lending products. Amazon is going to be lending you the money to rent out these uh, vans that your employees are going to be driving. So that puts a lot of pressure, a lot of stress on you. Taking a loan to start a business is never really a good idea. Uh, it can be in certain situations, but you have to be very cautious here. And when you're talking about dealing with someone like Amazon, do you really want to take a loan from them when they can easily, you know, change their route, uh, cut your routes as a delivery service partner and make it very hard to pay back that loan? So Amazon actually looks for a lot of these DSPs to have at least 30K in net liquid assets. And that's because if they decide to shift, give you less routes, you still have to pay off these loans to them. They don't want you to file bankruptcy. They want to be able to take at least $30,000 from you before you go out of business. The final reason to avoid this opportunity to avoid becoming an Amazon delivery service partner is because Amazon holds all of the power here. That's exactly how they like it. They want all of the power, but they want to shift all of the risk onto you. So Amazon is still the one giving out these routes. Uh, they give out the routes in bunches to these DSPs. And if you're not performing at a high enough metric, they might start cutting your routes. So these DSPs are really just walking on eggshells here. They could have all of their routes snatched up and taken from them if Amazon decides that they don't like them. So as a DSP, you spend a lot of time just trying to impress Amazon, trying to get them to like you and doing everything you can to maintain those routes. Uh, but as we've seen on a smaller scale with Amazon's flex drivers, Amazon doesn't really care about these drivers. If they find a better way to get these routes delivered, they will easily pass it off uh, and you know shift their routes to a different direction. If you've worked as an Amazon DSP, please let me know. Leave a comment down below. Let me know how the business is going. If it's really not as bad as I'm talking about, I'd love to get your opinion on it because obviously, uh, you know, it could potentially be a profitable business, but it could also be a huge headache. And they only really released uh, this new way of operating with DSPs in 2018. So we're kind of still in the honeymoon period. 
Uh, it's really too soon to tell if Amazon's going to start squeezing their DSPs and trying to nickel and dime so that they can get more money uh, back into their profit margin for themselves. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.